All right. Well, welcome to the Friday Morning Book Group. And uh, as I said, this uh, month we are discussing Ann Patchett's This is the Story of a Happy Marriage. And uh, again, so I chose this book as I could not get enough copies of her newest book, which is These Precious Days. Uh, but this is like that book. This is also a collection of um, memoirs and um, recollections and stories. And um, we had never done a book like this before. I thought this was a good time. So we're, we're gonna do it. And her voice is just wonderful. As I said, the audio is amazing on both. I listened to both the newest and this one. If you have a chance to listen to her voice, do so. It's amazing. So there's a few ways to discuss a book like this. You can pull out the, the, the subject matter um, that she discusses throughout. You can pull out the themes. I tried to think about what's the best way to discuss this. So for me, um, aside from uh, her beautiful writing, her beautiful simple prose, um, I thought uh, we could talk about the subjects um, which cover such topics as um, childhood, growing up, her career, her writing, death, uh, caregiving is, is covered quite a bit, um, her themes of um, uh, marriage, certainly writing, adventure and love. Uh, so I, I thought um, relationships were covered a lot in her writing, her relationships with her grandmother, with her dog, with her ex-husband, with her husband, um, with friends, with the nun. <laughs> um, so we could talk about that quite a bit. So I thought that would be a good way to discuss it and the stories or the memoirs where relationships are, are, are delved into quite a bit. The Paris match, the sacrament of divorce, the dog, this dog's life, Tennessee, her relationship with her state, <laughs> the wall, which is when she went to become a, a, a police, a policeman, uh, love sustained, that was with her grandma. That was one of my favorites. Um, so we could, we could talk about her relationships. Um, but I would like you to talk about anything you would like, if you talk, like to discuss anything uh, outside of that or within that, within that uh, theme. Um, and uh, so I, I would leave it open. Um, I was very intrigued by her starting of her bookstore, Parnassus, which mean, which is a mountain in Greece where artistic muses were born. I never knew that. I knew that she had this bookstore named Parnassus, but I never knew that. And I never knew that Nashville, her home, is the Athens of the South. So it, it fits. <laughs> um, so uh, for the new members, what we do is we go around the room or the screen and we give everyone a chance to speak. You don't have to speak, you can just listen. Um, on Zoom, we raise our hand if you'd like to speak and we take a turn um, and I call on you. So um, I invite everyone to share in the discussion and um, who would like to speak? Um, who is that? Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was very fascinated with the, the one about Clemson. Oh. And my granddaughter is applying and it's been accepted to Clemson. Oh. <laughs> and a lot of other Southern schools. So I gave that to her to read. I don't know if she did, but I found it very disturbing that the Southern Bible Belt, it was just awful. And I tried to to find out whether she was bisexual and there's no mention at all. You, you can't find anything. So I, I don't think she really had a sexual relationship with the woman, but it was, she would neither, neither deny it or affirm. So. Yeah. 
but I found the reaction of those people just awful. Awful, I know. It was terrible. Terrible. I, but then, um, go, I'd doing, like somebody to respond. Go ahead, Tricia. Tricia. You know, but, but her lesson to them, go to the primary source. I thought right. that was just great. She wasn't arguing with her critics. She was no. directing those students to do the proper thing, which is go to the source, think for yourself, come to your own conclusions. Don't let anybody tell you what not to read. And um, I absolutely loved this whole book. Um, and I, I'm recommending it to all of my friends and I want to give it because I think it's available in paperback now. Yeah. Um, I just love her voice and I've, I'm not a very, I'm not good at discerning what it is about a particular writer's style. But this woman is so, um, she's simple. She writes yeah. in a simple voice with wonderfully earthbound observations. And, um, after reading this, I read uh, the current book by Elizabeth Strout, O. William, which mm -hmm. is about a relationship with a divorced husband, which was very interesting, very interesting about the continued connection there, which Ann Patchett seems to have none of with her first husband, although it was a seminal experience for her. Um, but this woman has grown so much in her life and she's had such interesting experiences and talk about i loved her her essays about writing yeah. learning mm -hmm. to write by writing yeah. for 17 and other <laughs> magazines yeah. learning to produce that 600 word thing yeah. to a deadline um I, I thought that was just wonderfully practical advice i mm -hmm. loved the book start to finish I thought, oh my God, if my children feel about me the way she felt about her grandmother, right. I will be a happy person. Right. You know? right. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad you loved it. I loved it as much. I Have you read her other books, Tricia? I've read Bel Canto and I've read State of Wonder. Okay. I, I want to read them all now. Okay. And yeah. I, yeah. Bel Canto and State of Wonder are such hugely different universes yeah. that I didn't recognize the Ann Patchett voice in them. I read Bel Canto many years ago on the beach, and I, then I read it again on the beach several years ago. Now I want to read it again. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I have read most of her books, um, and I was actually thinking the one book I have not read is Run. And oh, I, I like that. Reading, and that book is a Boston based book. Yep. And I thought maybe we would do it for one of our discussions since it's a Boston based book. Um, and it's different than it is a little different than some of her. A lot of her books are kind of, they have a little fantasy to them, but I don't think this one does. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be fun to do it at, at some future take, date. I uh, liked it very much. Good, 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 good. Good to know. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much, Tricia and Anne. Uh, Anne, did you have anything else uh, you wanted? Yes, to say? Yes, um, the writing part. I like that very much too, because my daughter has written articles for Highlights and Cricket. Oh, and okay. she, had, she had a publisher come to her and ask her to write a book about oh. stars. She's an astronomer. So oh. she's written a children's book. And so oh. I would like her to read that. I found oh, that very yeah. interesting. That would be, but she's, that would... she's a very much a procrastinator. I don't know how she ever wrote the articles for the magazines. <laughs> it's funny. Oh gosh. Well, yeah, thank so I'm you so much. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Tricia. Um, okay, who else would like to speak? Um, let's see. Um, Vodna. Yes, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Um, I love Anne Patchett's work and we read, um, what was it? The Dutch House? Yeah, we did. Um, right. yeah. Which I was one of my favorite books that I read last year. So 
as an author, her nonfiction works, I adore. This particular, and I listened to the audiobook because when I saw that it was in her voice, I wanted to hear it. And like you, I thought she was elegant. She's very matter of fact. Um, and for all her accomplishments, very self-effacing, I thought, very humble about it. So there were many aspects, especially I thought the listening to her added more for pleasure for me yeah. than just, but the actual content of the book, I found not meaty and not that enjoyable. There were a few nuggets, like when, um, you know, um, what they just said about the primary source and talking to the students, the part where she talks about going on holiday and then wanting to come back home. There were some real nuggets of wisdom and observations she made that I liked. But as a memoir, I didn't find it meaty enough. I, I, I read it and listened to the whole thing because I like her as an author and I like her work. But if this was someone else other than Anne Patchett, I think I would have given up reading it at some point. Okay. Um, having said that, but it is Dan Patchett. So I do think that I always feel like you get more out of things when you bring something to it. So knowing her background, her biography, I think I will appreciate future works even more. Okay. You know, so I, I'm still glad I read it, but it okay. wasn't that meaty or that enjoyable in, in terms of its own content. Okay. Now you read it or you listened to it? I listened to it. Sorry, I listened to you it. You listened to it. Okay. okay. Yeah, which I liked. I think that that added a lot of joy for me okay. Okay. was her well, voice. You know, yeah. You know, this is why for new folks, this is why we have the group because if everybody, oh my gosh, I'm looking out to town hall and there's probably 50 birds. I don't know what they are. Canadian geese probably oh. uh, on the lawn there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right in front of town hall. I'm in the conference room. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, it, that's why it's great to have a discussion, uh, different points of view, and I love that. I love that. Um, well, thank you so much, Vanna, and I just let Hyo in. Hi, Hyo. How are you? Good. All right. Well, we're in discussion, and um, what? Um, open it up to anyone else who would like to speak. Um, Tanya. Uh, I usually go for the memoirs I love because it's true to life. And I was amazed that she revealed so much about the private life, which to me, it was amazing because I would kind of maybe be ashamed to say about the first divorce and all that. I yeah. don't think I would reveal it as much as she did. And yeah. that really got you know, I, I said, oh, my God, she's really into it, everything. And she described it so well. And I love the book, as everybody else did. Oh. And uh, you, like I always say to you, you choose the right books. And I recommended this book to many of my friends. Oh, good. But the thing is, I do like a connection. And she did, from one story to the next, you wanted to go on and reading because the way she described every every story it was so interesting and uh, just a nice, wonderful book to read. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Tanya. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, she really, she really bared her soul in this book, I felt. I mean, so I much, so much. I mean, I was just astounded to read about 12.30th. The, the amount of divorce. Oh, in Anita family. Olson. Oh. Um, and can you just mute yourself? Um, I'll mute you. No, Cynthia. Um, uh, I was just astounded at the, um, amount of divorce in her family. Um, you know, my goodness, every single person was divorced. So no wonder she was, you know, hesitant to remarry. <laughs> but um, anyway. Well, um, okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, oh, uh, Laura. Uh, the, I, I also was, that part was very interesting to me. And I, I didn't know much about her. And I mentioned to a friend that we had read this book and 
the Clemson story that y'all had alluded to earlier. And she, I, and I, I, I love this book and I loved learning about her style, like how she developed her writing skills and, and the arc of her life and all, all the things that everyone has said. And I did enjoy it. I did feel like it was a journey. But what my friend said, who is the biggest bookworm in the world, is that the controversy about the book about her friend who had died was that um, a lot of bibliophiles won't read her because they feel that she told her friend's story um, in a... Um, Oh my God, what's the word? Um, trying to profit off of her friend's loss, off of her friend's death. And that it was very controversial that she um, would go out and write her friend's story posthumously and that she was trying to profit off it in some way. And the way this book was written, it didn't, I don't, I don't know if we heard from her account everything that really happened to kind of I don't, I don't want to give Clemson a break here at all, but I'm wondering if we didn't hear the whole story about what the attack on her book was. It wasn't just illicit content from what I understand. And I don't, I was wondering if anybody else had heard anything. I don't know whether you're talking, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know whether you're talking about the book, uh, um, The Truth and the Beauty, about her yeah. friend Lucy. I forget exactly when, but uh, I just moved from Tallahassee, Florida to uh, Wellesley. But um, maybe that's, uh, that's about the time when she went to Clemson University and Patchett came to Florida State University and she was talking about lots of things. And one of the things was, of course, the truth and beauty. Mm -hmm. So one audience just point blank said, did you have a, a, a lesbian relationship with Lucy? And I think that's the question that almost everybody had in mind. And right. she said, absolutely not. It was a pure friendship. Mm. That's really good to hear because I think if you're lucky, you have a friend, yeah. like a friendship like they had, if you're lucky. Yep. Uh, yeah. So had you heard anything in that context about what, why everyone was so upset about this book <laughs> because or if it was it just that that they i think just was... people assumed that, that was like a, a oh, lesbian oh. relationship that's yeah. why a lot of people wanted to ask that question and yeah. i didn't know anything about the clemson incident but at florida state university uh, we did not have all those blue ha, -ha over uh, her visit yeah. Yeah. so yeah. actually people welcomed her visit that's great I think, uh, I, I personally, I think it's so sad that people focus on that. It's like yes. such a small thing that people focus on that. It's just, I it's can't not a small thing. I head around it. Fortunately, I just can't. So, well, thank you for that, Hio. Appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, and thank you, Lara. Would you like to speak more, Lara? The only other thing I wanted to say in relationship to Ann Patchett is, did anybody read Commonwealth? No. Yes, I did. I, that's hers too. Yeah. She wrote they, Commonwealth. I, yes, and that's, uh, that's her life too. I mean, the, yeah. the families, the divorce coming together by coastal. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's the I, only book of hers I've read. Yeah. Um, and I found it hard to get through. I didn't, I love the story. I found the writing hard, but I thought this was amazing. So I'm ready to read more of her work now. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Lara. Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay, who else would like to? Pam. Um, I loved the book. I actually want to read the other one, but I can't, I'm on a wait list for it. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I think in that one, there's the story about Suki. Um, yeah. in the Precious yeah. Days, which maybe other people have read in the Atlantic. A wonderful, wonderful st yeah, true story. Yeah. Um, uh, I loved this book, and it's so interesting hearing what people pull out of it, because um, I just like her style, and I like the story and the memoir aspect, but what really uh, engaged me the most were the, the caregiving stories. Uh, her story of her grandmother just just knocked me out of the park it was just amazing 
And similarly, the dog one at the end, uh, um, I'm somebody who doesn't have a dog, so I don't have that relationship, but it still really was so powerful. Absolutely, absolutely. And there were a couple other stories I really enjoyed, uh, completely different, and um, that was the RV one. I thought that was just <laughs> really fun. I made my husband right. read it. All he reads are is and thrillers, and he enjoyed it. <laughs> so That's and he great. got through it. That's great. And then I liked the wall, the one about her. Um, oh at the police academy. I thought that was a really good story. That's a great one, yeah. And one thing, all the personal things she um, revealed, I admire her for doing that, but I felt a little voyeuristic reading about them. I mean, she put it out there, so I shouldn't have, but yeah. I kind of don't want to know that much about somebody's really deep personal life. Oh, uh, yeah. So. yeah, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my take. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. Yeah. I too loved the, the one with the grandmother. It was the caregiving. I felt she's such a caregiver, you know, the, the nun and the dog and the, the man on the road who she said, let me take you, you know, oh, yeah. his wife, you know, uh, and she did so much, so many things she did. It's just like a very full life and um, quite amazing, I thought. Um, okay, uh, who else? Uh, Richard. I like the book. I did not finish it, but I, I will finish it. I, I, I sort of picked and choose. Um, actually, thanks to Pam, I read some of the things she liked. The wall chapter was just amazing. I mean, I never realized that she was in such outstanding physical shape. But any anybody that could climb a wall, right, or, or to do the a gymnastic, wall. <laughs> those gymnastic, um, along with the running, um, in that hot weather, needless to say, amazing. She had a real good. Um, she's got a good, real good analysis of things too. Like she said, I'm really lucky. I was number twenty eight. And like, let's, I'm doing it before it gets real hot in the day. Oh, that oh. Type. And um, I don't know how much of it she was doing it because she wanted to do it or how much she was doing to try to please her father. Um, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if she would have done this had her father not been, she said she only saw her father like once or twice a year growing up, but she still felt very close to him. Yeah, and she, yeah. She actually said she was close to one of her stepfathers from her mother's. Yes, marriage. yes. She yeah. has a like, way of engaging with people um, and forming Absolutely. relationships. She's a real people person. Well, I think she initially she did try to join the police academy because she really wanted to write about the experience right. she had no intention of joining right but he wanted her to join in a in a in a very deep way but she really didn't want to but um but she loved him so much her father her biological father in addition she loved mike her stepfather very much and you i know, think she he, liked her father's his stepmother too i don't know how much Je was it jerry Jerry, yeah, she liked, uh, she loved Jerry too. Yeah, she had so many people in her life and you think about it, she, I mean, she didn't love all of them, but think of it, she had four step siblings. Um, so. <laughs> the, yeah, the love of the dog I thought was amazing too. I agree with Pam. Um, I didn't, I've never had a dog either. <laughs> never grew up with animals. I could never imagine God bless my mother with a dog or so it never happened. <laughs> but I mean, when she said this dog, she mourned the death of this dog more than most people she knew that died. That was pretty, Yeah. that was, that was quite a strong statement. I thought, and I really liked the getaway. Yeah. Our chapter about the writing. Um, two things. Car. Yeah. Two things that really stuck out about how she's able to do it was that sign up sheet that her friend who was a writer would do. He would sign up the times he would write during the day on the sheet. Oh. <laughs> that was sort of a way to measure her, 
And, you know, she said, it's not so hard to put in an hour in every day. And there was some humor in the book. I liked when she was doing an event and this woman came up to her, wouldn't leave her alone. And she she felt bad about getting Amy Bloom involved. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, Amy <laughs> Bloom. <laughs> but you'll definitely be interested in my memoir. I want you to be part of it. Um, and of course, she said, everybody thinks whatever their memoir is always the most compelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I do think what enhanced um, people's liking this book is how much you knew about it in the first place by reading her books. I never read her first book that she said sold 45,000, where she netted 45,000. Gross 45,000, Patrons, Saints, and Lovers. Anybody read that book? Pa patrons no, I did. of Liars. Did you like it? Yes, I loved it. Hmm. Very, I read very it. I read it. I don't remember it, but I know I liked well, it. Well, it's, it's it was about the, the home for unwed mothers. Oh, and that's this, right. That's right. And oh. the person who came was actually married. Yeah. Remember that that was the lie. It was That's very right. interesting. That's right. Yeah, you should read it, Richard. Bel Canto was probably the time I was reading it, which was probably one of my all-time favorite books yeah, back. Yeah, everybody loved. I did not like that. Like the flag. You didn't like it? Nope. Oh, my gosh. Sorry to mention, I didn't like Run, but I read it so long ago. I'm willing oh, to give it. Well, that. maybe we'll try it. It's not. Um, it. Try. Run is one of her shorter books. It might be a good book club choice, but Bel Canto is uh, usually, I mean, that's one of her all time, usually most people love that book, but not everybody. Mm -hmm. it's so weird. Yeah. To me, it was so weird, it, the other country. I didn't kind of get yeah. it. Oh, I yeah. love that book. I love yeah. it. Maybe because of the music thing. I, I oh, Stay in Wonder you talked about. Um, the other book that I, I've, re I've read a lot of her book, the other book I couldn't get into was Commonwealth. Oops, let me get out of here. Yeah, it took uh, me the second half. Uh, but um, but it was hard to get into the oranges. All, all I remember is something about the oranges. Yeah. <laughs> um, not even read about Canto again. Just like someone was read it three times <laughs> again. Oh. Um, so um. Yeah, the thing about the dog was really good too, and the relationship with the the ninety four year old grandmother that was yeah, um, it was great. Uh, okay, well, um, let's try to go around the room. Who else would like to speak? Um, Judy, I too loved the book. I thought it was terrific. My preference is always uh, for nonfiction. So what amazed me about this book, and I think her style of writing is exceptionally uh, easy on the reader, but what I found particularly amazing was her philosophy. She writes about... Um, everyday subjects, if not in all our lives, in many of our lives. It's not a trip around the world in which she discovers herself or some uh, uh, apocalyptic event. She's making these discoveries and sharing them with us through everyday life experiences. And I thought that was both amazing and terrific. I think she was particularly generous in sharing her tips on writing. Yeah, oh yeah. In, 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 and I understood the reaction about her revealing personal details. But my sense was if she was willing to reveal them, yeah. then it was okay for us to read them. Yeah. And she yeah. did not set it in a kind of voyeuristic manner, but it was 
part of her life and memoir. I must say, I contrast her with Elizabeth Gilbert in Eat, Pray, and Love. Oh. oh. That's the name. Yeah. And, Eat, pray, love. and also a little bit in Hillbilly Elegy. Oh. I think she takes life as it is and makes the best of it. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was a tremendous gift to us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you put it in a perfect capsule, Judy. I, I so appreciate your insight. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to speak? Um, Rosalind. Well, I, I really like the book, and I have, would never have probably picked it up as a group of essays, and I appreciated that you had picked it. But I liked the part when she was at Sarah Lawrence, and she talked about becoming a writer and how difficult it was. And I think that people feel somehow you just get talent, you know, somehow but I think hers was a long struggle. And I thought she took, she put, she, she gave testimony, I thought, to these three professors that she had and how much they helped her. Um, and having been an English teacher myself, I look back on the fact that it's very now very difficult to really bring critique to any high school writing or people are really afraid to be very blunt and direct. And I, I think she appreciated how hard she worked. Mm. Uh, and then I think that the skills that she has now as a writer haven't just come from nothing. They've come from years and years and years of practice and uh, professional um, involvement herself with other writers too. So sure. I really appreciated that angle. I know one of my friends is a children's writer and she's got she's been working 10 years to get one out and now she'll have five out but it's not an easy process and mm -hmm. i appreciated how she yeah. talked about her own struggles sure sure oh thank you well i'm sure it's uh i mean i mean i just think about how many books she's put out and mm -hmm. to get one book out i can imagine i can only imagine how difficult the process just not just the writing but the whole process of it today i mean i see as a librarian how the the enormous um explosion of books from when i was a librarian 15 years ago to today just 15 years i mean it's just huge it's the competition i imagine it's just huge yeah. huge it's not all that profitable <laughs> for, yeah. Yeah. for most writers. Yeah, yeah, it's just... Don't um, quit your day job. <laughs> I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how much is out there between indie, you know, independent publishing and other. It's... Yeah. So thank you so much, Rosalind. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, who would like to speak? Who else would like to speak? Anybody else? Uh, let's see. Um, did I see Hillary's hand? Hillary? Oh, Judy I, has her hand up. I see Eve. I see Eve. Eve. <laughs> Eve. Um, I only got. I only got through about three or four stories. I, I just found it, there were a lot of things that I just really didn't want to read about. Um, but the stories that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the one about the opera because I've been to a couple of those simulcasts and, you know, my husband took, took some arm twisting to get me to go because I'm not really into opera, but those things are amazing. If you've never been to one, I highly recommend it. And I guess when I first started reading the book, when she was talking about, and if I remember correctly, you know, how a writer, before they actually put a word on a paper, it's all, all really lofty and, um, 
you know, but then by the time you put it on paper, it's like you've run over it with a car. And I, I just kind of felt like that just really, I don't know, it bothered me. I, I really love her books. And I felt like, does she feel like at the end of writing a book that it's just something that she's run over? I, I don't know. It just really, it just kind of gave me something that I left kind of an unpleasant thought in my mind about her as a writer. I just really didn't like that. So, but I don't know. I don't usually read essays, so it was good to read something different. Okay. But um, I don't know. I just couldn't get through it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eve. I appreciate your, your thoughts and your opinion. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Um, yeah, Laura. What you said was so interesting because it felt like um, seeing how the sausage was made for writing and maybe we didn't need to, I just started reading um, Stephen King's book on writing, um, which is fantastic. Not, and I'm not a horror person at all, but it's a, it's very similar in that it explains his life. It's very autobiographical memoir. And then also about writing. So I, I thank you for saying that because I, I think this was really a big insight into how a prolific author, like her process. And I, the way she said that not everybody could write a story like that, that woman that she was, had that altercation with that, um, which I think you mentioned at the beginning, like, I think everybody has a story, but not everyone is a storyteller. And I think that's what she was getting at. And that I thought that was a really interesting point that she made. And anyhow, sorry. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Rosalind. Well, I remember reading that passage where she thought that as she created the book, it was like butterflies. It was like this wildness, this great joy in her mind. Yeah. And I think what she meant was that the, the disappointment when you see that incredible world and you probably worked on it for several years on the page became a disappointment. But I didn't really feel it meant that she was um, didn't like the, what she'd written, but that it was so different from the experience, this incredible joy. And I think she described that very well, um, the incredible joy of living with the book and letting it circulate in your mind. And then age, you know, that's true of whatever you might do, like if you want to paint or whatever you like to do, and then you look at what you've done and, you know, there is a sense, oh, that was such a great idea, but looking at the page, it's not as great as I had dreamt it was gonna be. But I, I didn't feel it, it meant that she cool. didn't like what she did, you know, sure. in a long time. That, that's all my own feeling about it. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I appreciate that. I, mean, I don't think that she felt that she didn't like it. I just, I felt as a, you know, a consumer of what she's written, I felt yeah, I think she, I, I felt like she was sort of uh, a sense of, I did feel a sense of disappointment and you want to think that an author would love that the, what they have right. to do. I under, totally understand your, what, how you felt. And I think that's why that passage stood out. I mean, I can remember reading that passage so clearly, um, too, that, you know, it was a real pow in, in that book, I thought. Right, right. And you get disappointed in some ways. You get disappointed after all the work she has done, how she feels. Would, why would she feel that way about her books? Right, right. I think you... you would capture, you expressed it much better than I did, but that's oh, what I, I, I... I don't know. I just felt... I just felt that, um, you know, why would she be disappointed? But, you know, there's a lot of disappointment in her life anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Well, that's um, another interesting diversion to, to talk about. Thank you so much. Any, any other <clears throat> thoughts? Yeah. Um, anyone who has not yet spoken would like, anybody who has not yet spoken like to speak? Uh, no. Okay. So anybody who has spoken. Uh, so Trisha. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm a cook. 
I'm a knitter. I used to be a sewer. And I, when I started a project or if I start to cook something, I always think it's going to be fantastic. And then it just is what it is. It's not necessarily fantastic. Sure. Um, and I think that that's something of a parallel with what she's talking about in terms of writing. Sure. Um, that you, you fantasize something perfect or otherworldly almost. And then the reality, the concretization of what you have fantasized is often not, it doesn't meet the, um, the fantasy. Let's put it that way. I get that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, usually the expectation is higher than reality. So when your expectation is not met, there comes disappointment. So it's understandable. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, especially I, overachievers, they, they tend to have more disappointment too. <laughs> Probably yep. so. Yep. Yeah. Um, we'll take one more comment. Uh, Anne? Did anybody listen to the NPR? Oh, I, I, I found her idea on marriage fascinating. <laughs> because she didn't want to have children, uh -huh. why would she get married? I, I thought that was very interesting because she had been so burned. Yes. And her husband, when they finally, because of the health crisis, she finally decided we'll get married. Yeah. And he loved her more because he could relax because he'd been wanting to get married for yeah. so long. And yeah. he was afraid that he would say something that would scare her away. So they finally got married. Yeah. And he was just, he was, was so and then they, how they, yeah. they merged their accounts. Yeah, they their merged money. It. Yep, yeah. But I, it was, I thought, yeah, it was, it was so very interesting. interesting. That when he got, when his wa first wife left him, he immediately wanted to get married again. I know. <laughs> very unusual for me, for anybody. Oh, I think really. Oh, men, men don't like living alone. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose you're right. But anyway, uh, thank you all so much. Great discussion. Um, I, um, Trisha, Trisha, you reminded me that I need to ask you guys about, because you mentioned knitting. So, um, how many of you would be interested in a Zoom knitting, crochet, crafty get together over Zoom? Anybody interested? <laughs> Nobody. Not me. Wait, right. I'd Judy. Love, Judy. I'd love I would do learn. it. Judy. I love to learn about collage. Collage. Okay, good to know. Anybody? Making collage. Yeah, I like that too. Collage. Yep. I I would like the, that. Yeah. The art in the lobby right now is beautiful. It's collage adjacent. Okay. <laughs> collage. Anybody? Okay. Nobody for knitting or crochet. Well, I, well, I do. I do embroidery, and so I don't know if it, this is just a get together and everyone do their own craft it's a get at the together. same time. It's a get together. Everybody does their own craft. It would be like once a week on a Zoom. Week. Um, and what? See, we used to have a Zoom. Um, uh, we used to have an in-person knitting club here at the library on Sundays. It was very well attended. We had a core group. Can't do it anymore. COVID. So I was thinking maybe we could do a Zoom group. You do whatever craft you want. You meet people on Zoom, um, any craft you want. So it, we might yeah. do it. I was just kind of feeling, get, putting out feelers. Okay, so- Yeah, I would be very interested. Okay, so you and Judy and- I would too. Uh, who is that? Rosalind. Rosalind. Okay. Rosalind. Sorry. Excellent. Okay. Well, I will uh, pass that on. So for February, we are going to read the book Passing by Nella Larson. I have copies behind the reference desk. Um, I purchased, the friends purchased these copies. I couldn't get enough copies. So we purchased them and you will borrow them on the honor system. They're not barcoded. They won't be checked out. 
if you could please read them, keep them in good shape, and then just return them to us. I appreciate it. You know there's a movie uh, passing on I, I know. Uh, Netflix, maybe. I found that it's, out after I chose the book. It's a book I've always wanted to read, and I felt it was very timely. It's written in 1929. It's very timely. You can read about it on the website. I've already put in um, a registration for next month. You can read about it. Who's the um, author? Nella Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N, Nella, N-E-L-L-A. The title is Passing, P-A-S-S-I-N-G. Yeah. It's a very short, it's a novella, it's very short. It's a beautiful book, it's a, a very, very well-written novella. I think you'll, you'll find it very, very, very resonant, very timely. Did we read the book about twins who one passed and the other didn't? No. What What is that? I can't remember what the name of it is. Oh, okay. So it's very oh, interesting. Uh, the the um, by Britt Bennett, uh, the Vanishing Half. Yes. Yes, That's we didn't it. do that, but I'm thinking about that as a follow up. <laughs> it's a good book. Yeah, we very, might do that very as a follow up to passing. Yeah. Okay, well, unfortunately, right. I have to go to the reference desk. <laughs> so I'm going to say adieu, but I thank you all for joining us today. Wonderful to have all of you. Thank you new to new members. Great to have all of you, and uh, wonderful to see all your faces. And I look forward to meeting in person. I don't know when, of course, I don't know, but it looks like Looks like things are getting a little bit better. <laughs> so we cross our fingers and we hope for better days. And everybody, please stay well, take care of yourselves, and be safe. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see everyone. Be well. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Yeah, we have Sparky. Um, you named your dog, you were a writer, you named your dog Sparky? <laughs> You'd have to meet the dog. Go on the website. The